This little box right here may not look like much, but it is an exciting little product for streamers, content creators, broadcasters, show producers, what have you, that I did not expect to enjoy so much. This is the Bird Dog 4K NDI Flex. This is their new set of NDI products. There's actually three specific products involved here. We have two in for review that are a lot cheaper than the glass NDI pro products from them I took a look at during my video essay. And they support 4K and some really cool stuff. And they're really tiny. We're gonna be checking them out because they are pretty awesome. You know what else is awesome? My Discord server, where you can get free downloads of some pretty awesome stuff. We've had, I have an 8K ready classic 2008 YouTube video player template for Photoshop. If you wanna build your own little retro YouTube looking layouts. I just released a new analog vibe stream pack with a bunch of graphics that I captured and built on real VHS tapes for your stream, for BRB scenes, webcam overlays, things like that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we've got some extra scripts for video editors and things like that, and we'll be adding more and more over time. So join our awesome community of people over on Discord to get support for tech, to join and chat about streaming or retro games or content creation or a plethora of nerdy topics, as well as just generally hang out with us and have a good time. That's eposfox.gg slash Discord. Join us today. If you don't know what NDI is and why any of this product matters, I highly recommend you go watch my video essay on NDI and how it's revolutionized the broadcast industry as it explains a lot that will make this video make a lot more sense and hopefully teach you some cool stuff about broadcast. But to break it down, NDI is basically a transport protocol for video stream over network. So instead of connecting an HDMI or SDI capture card to your computer, you just take an HDMI input or SDI and spit it out over the network and then any computer even at the same time, can access that video feed over your network. So then you can say, I have a computer up here in this room or a even a game console up here in this room that I want to access on a completely different floor to then record or stream. I can stream that over my network using this protocol in fairly lossless looking quality, depending on what you're working with, and pick it back up on another floor or somewhere else in a building or what have you. It's really freaking handy and has been a lot of fun to play with recently. And these products are kind of the next evolution of what's coming out there. So this is specifically the Flex uh, In for their 4K NDI line. They have an In, they have an Out, and then they have a Backpack. And I have the In and the Backpack in for review today. And they are pretty cool. So these are $400 each, which is about half the price of their bigger uh, NDI Studio product that I checked out earlier in the year. But they haven't reduced the price of that studio. That being said, these kind of do individually everything that that Studio Box did all in one. So... I kind of understand to a degree. But the main flex here is just a big plastic box. You've of course got the Bird Dog logo on front. You've got very quiet, like if you put them up to your ears, you can hear them. But in terms of literally move them a few inches away, you can't hear them. Uh, fans for keeping it cool. You've got a tally ring light around the front here. RS-232 control, uh, headset jack for the NDI comms support that they have. And then of course you have HDMI in. You've got DC in and DC pass through for the barrel jack. And then you have the ethernet for connecting to NDI. It also supports power over ethernet. So you have two different ways you can power this either through the DC jack 12 volts or through power over ethernet. Now the backpack is the same thing, but it's got a hump on the back or the NPF style battery from Sony, which allows you to then slot it into say your video field monitor and power the monitor from that while still powering the NDI box through your 12 volt. So for example, the use case that is really exciting for me for this is on my main cinema camera, I have my Atomos Ninja Inferno, which is then powered off of a 12 volt to DC, you know, the little barrel plug adapter into it. And that just ran straight into the monitor and it was fine. So instead I just slotted in the backpack into one of the NPF battery slots on the Atomos Ninja Inferno and then plugged the power into that. And the power passes through the backpack into the monitor so it's all powered without any extra cables other than just running an extra hdmi from the monitor into the ndi box and we're good to go which is pretty freaking cool the only problem i have since run into is on the ninja inferno specifically the extra you know muffin top of the brick actually covers up the battery eject button on one side and so i'm gonna have to get a butter knife or something to get that off i did not realize that before i put it on uh, but with something like the Ninja V and most other field monitors, that really shouldn't be a problem.
For handheld rigs, this is a little uh, less convenient unless you're running everything off of D-Tap and an extra V-mount matter battery mounted on it in the first place, as I don't have really any way to run an extra 12 volt line up to my monitor. I just have it powered off of another battery. So you've got gigabit ethernet for up to 4K NDI. You've got power, uh, you've got HDMI input for up to 4K. Now this can do 720p 60 all the way up to 4K 30. Unfortunately, no 4K 60 support, which was kind of disappointing to see, but for most of this use case, not really something that you would need to mess with a whole heck of a lot. They did separate out the input and the output devices. So for example, this this and the backpack are both input NDI and they're just encoders, not decoders. Whereas the big NDI studio can do up, down, left, right. You know, it can do all the, you can convert HDMI to SDI. You can also do transcode or, you know, encoding to NDI and decoding at the same time. You can do pretty much anything. You can only do encoding on the inbox and the backpack. And then they have a separate out box that does the decoding. Although I'm not sure that's released yet. Now this does support the full Mac Daddy iFrame NDI, not NDI HX. So you're getting the full, very high quality mode. And I'll have some examples on screen where you can see that even at 200 megabits per second, it competes with the straight out of camera image out of my GH5S and even my Ursa Mini Pro to a degree, you know, within reasonability, given that the Ursa Mini Pro is only outputting 1080p over HDMI instead of the native 4.6K and it's shooting in RAW versus already encoded, but you, you get the idea. The, the, the quality is pretty solid. You can go up to 360 megabits per second. They recommend, I believe it's about 50 for 1080p and, a, and 100 megabits per second for UHD. Um, but I, I usually do 200 megabits per second for 4K, which is what I was mainly testing here. I did notice, even though it was connected to my 10 gigabit network, I was having some frame rate fluctuations around the 300, you know, cranking it to max bit rate going into OBS from NDI, I did notice that I was having some frame rate fluctuations at max bit rate, despite being on a network that can more than support it, because I have a 10 gigabit network, it was connected to one of the 10 gigabit ports. There, there's always some little hiccups with NDI when it comes to fully maxing out the available bit rate for it, but dropping it to 200 megabits per second for 4K, I had completely smooth bit rate, and like I said, the quality was absolutely phenomenal. Audio is supported up to uh, 48 kilohertz at stereo. Now, what's cool is in the dashboard, you can actually choose some of the quality settings that influence both how much bandwidth it requires to look good and just the signal type that you're working with. So you can choose YUV or YVU, and you can choose whether you're sending a 420 or a 422 signal. So if you know your camera doesn't output 422, uh, like a lot of the smaller mirrorless cameras and things like that, then you can actually drop it to 420 and save yourself a little bit of, you know, bandwidth quality. You know, it's going to be negligible, but it, it's still useful to have that control just to make sure the... Uh, you know, the quality is fairly consistent. In terms of latency, I, back when I tested their Bird Dog NDI Studio, I noted that it was faster than most capture cards I tested. It was actually really impressive. Unfortunately, the latency for this is about 85 milliseconds for the input uh, going into OBS, which is slower than a lot of capture cards and then the previous box, but it was sending, you know, it is a different product and that's still more than good enough for most use cases. Like you're not going to be playing off the preview by any stretch if you're doing like gaming through this or something. But for most live productions, that's not a problem at all. So really, that's <laughs> it's slower than direct HDMI. Imagine that. But overall, it's not a huge deal. So minor complaints here. I did have some instability with OBS and OBS's NDI plugin when connecting to this device. The first few times that I connect to it, connected to it with NDI, the plugin and OBS, which could use some updating or something. Maybe this is using a newer NDI version than the plugin has shipped with since OBS has updated, what have you. Uh, OBS would just crash to the desktop, which was a little weird and a little annoying, but not a deal breaker overall, of course. Uh, I mean, it would be if you were in a live stream, but it was only when it first connected, like when I added the source, it would crash, but then anytime I opened it with the source already open or as I was streaming with it for hours or anything like that, there was no crashes. It was purely like something weird with the handshake when it first tried to grab the source, it would kind of freak out and crash. Uh, but that was only the first couple times. And after a firmware update, which was required for another reason, that seems to have gone away. So that may be a non-issue for most of you. I did have to update the firmware though, as on both the in and the, uh, the backpack, I was getting a big red line down the right third of the screen that just kind of showed up and was stuck there. Even when I didn't have a source running into it and it was just streaming a black screen, that red line was still there. So I got kind of concerned, but like I said, I updated the firmware provided on their website. You just download it, tell the dashboard to update your 
for more fire file it'll reboot and you're good to go uh, by the way you ask access the dashboard by bird dog and then the last five digits of the serial number dot local and it pulls up really handy to use change all the settings you're good to go there and then once that was updated the red line has not reappeared so i think that was just a weird pre-launch firmware quirk whatever pretty good to go there in terms of mounting this thing you have two options depending on which one you're using if you have the backpack of course you want to mount it in a battery sled and you're good to go there the normal flex 4kn has these little screw terminals on the two far sides and they have an actual you know metal camera mount that then through that screws onto it and then gives you a quarter 20 thread to mount with a friction arm a little you know cold plate adapter what have you and you're good to go there so that was pretty cool to see so i talked about this a little bit in my original uh ndi video essay where i talked about the bigger ndi products from bird dog but they have two different pieces of software that might interest you to pair with this one is their central software and specifically central light for free uh, which allows you to manage and kind of monitor all of your ndi signals running through your network and make it a lot easier to work with if you have multiple you know units and cameras and things like that going along because you can stream with the ndi plugin in obs as well so it has that to manage all of that and then of course you have the comms software which again there's a light and a pro version because this has a four pole 3.5 millimeter hookup you can actually connect a talking headset to this and to any of their ndi products and then use this comms light software to manage that way the producer can chat with whoever's managing individual cameras and they can report back and forth and all of this is streamed with the video signal through ndi but it's only managed through the comm software so that only you hear it for managing comms it doesn't affect your actual broadcast feed this is just an extra layer of audio because ndi supports crazy number of audio channels uh, it's sent with you know it's an extra layer of audio just for the producers to be able to manage back and forth and communicate with each other without needing a separate walkie-talkie system or you know pa system or whatever they can chat through this and it's all unified into one hub so that's really freaking convenient even if a one-man show like myself doesn't really have a use for it so yeah these are fairly iterative in that it just kind of increases it to 4k shrinks it down gives you new mounting options splits up your you know your options to you but these little flex devices are really freaking cool and having ndi that's now supports 4k is actually going to be very useful for my work since i do produce my videos at 4k there are scenarios where i want to sit in signals back and forth and doing so through the obs plugin is for higher res signals is not always the most reliable experience so if you're interested in a small portable up to 4k uh 30 fps ndi solution for your broadcast or for your setup this might be the way to go. I, I'm fairly impressed, especially again with the backpack where I can just mount it up on my cinema rig, not have to have extra mounting arms or anything like that has immediately made it more handy. And now when I do future workbench streams such as PC building, I can immediately show you what I'm getting with B-roll from that camera without needing a whole lot of extra complicated setup because I can just plug in the ethernet jack and everything's already ready to go. And otherwise I can just leave it in place, which is pretty cool. Product links, as always, will be in the description down below if you want to pick this up for yourself. Shout out to Bird Dog for sending these out for review. Uh, they actually released a couple weeks ago, and I, I'm basically only getting one video done a week at this point as the hashtag new dad life, and so I haven't really managed to get around to it, but pretty cool stuff there regardless. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech education and stream guides. I'm Vox, your stream professor. I'll see you in the next one.